Hey there, I'm Sean Collins, and today I'm going to go through a quick presentation for you called Making Money Online with Affiliate Programs. And basically what I'm going to do here is to go step by step, seven steps that I would take if I was going to start a new affiliate site today. And i um, just go through the whole process with you, and nice and quick, so you can get a sense for how to do it yourself. And one thing I'll caution you is that this is really sort of a, a stepping stone it's for beginners in affiliate marketing. So you're not going to get rich on this website. It's something to learn the mechanics and to, if you stick with it for a while, you can certainly make money, but it's not something in the next couple weeks or, or so you're going to make money on. But um, so here we go. Come on along. Okay, so let's jump right in here. As the first, the title slide there suggests, it's uh, I say it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I say that because um, a lot of people have this misunderstanding that maybe affiliate marketing is something where you can get rich quick. And it's really something where you should really plan to invest time and energy and um, you'll see a payoff down the road, but it's not going to be something that you see right away. So uh, let me just jump into it here. One thing that um, I wanted to share is about the prevalence of affiliate marketing. And to illustrate that, I've got a, a chart here based on the annual internet retailer Hot 100 retail websites. And so they, they rank the, the different retail, retail sites on a number of different variables. But one thing they indicate in each listing is whether or not they have an affiliate program. And so here you can see that they, um, I refer to there being 75% of these retailers having affiliate programs. And some of the, the popular affiliate networks that are cited in this issue, Commission Junction, LinkShare, Google Affiliate Network, ShareSale, DoubleClick, AventLink, and Pepper Jam Network. And there are also a wealth more of, uh, of affiliate networks that are out there and if you just search on Google for Affiliate Network, you can see a big, big list of them. But um, in addition to having three quarters of this list, if you look any any time you see a list of like the top 10 retailers online, typically nine or 10 of those are gonna have affiliate programs as well. So it's, um, it's a place where pretty much, if there's a company you wanna promote, likely there's gonna be an affiliate program there. So, so that's just, a, just to give a little indicator of the, the reach of the industry. Anyway, quickly here, I'm going to go through seven things that I would do personally if I was creating a new affiliate site. And I'm going to cite some different companies, different services I use, and, um, and realize these are just the ones that I use that I prefer for various reasons. So certainly you're not locked into using these. You can use whoever you want. But they're just the companies that I, I enjoy dealing with. And just over years of experience, I've been an affiliate since 1997. So anyway into the the first thing here when you're choosing what to cover with your affiliate site just uh, brainstorm two or three different topics that you really care about and the key here is that you should be passionate about what you're creating the site about don't go looking for some kind of flavor of the day type thing whatever is hot in google trends instead going for something that's going to have staying power something you really care about because in reality if you're just chasing the trends if you're doing if you're blogging you're going to go for weeks or if you're lucky months and you'll get sick of it. But if you cover some kind of topic that you're really into, you really care about, then it's not a stretch that you could be invested in this and doing it for many, many months or years. So definitely go with something that you care about, a, a favorite sports team, a, your favorite dog breed, whatever kind of um, niche thing you're into, TV shows, movies, whatever, just um, go with what you care about. Um, next up, you're going to have to get a domain name for this new site. Personally, I use GoDaddy they, for a .com name, and you're, you're going to get a .com name. They go for about $10 a year. And when you're looking to figure out the name for your site, don't go crazy and spend a whole day trying to think of it. It's not that important. Get something that reflects what you're doing, and but don't spend more than 20 minutes on it. Just um, figure out a name and, and move on. And I would say to... Just for the first, when you're getting this first domain here, just buy the domain for one year and you can always renew it two months into it or whatever if you want to. But just um, if it's a project that you decide to abandon later on, it's not going to be that good for you if you went out and got a domain for five years or seven years, 10 years, whatever. So just put it in the 10 bucks for the one year. It's a modest investment and you can continue it at any time. Um, as far as hosting, you're going to need a host for this website you're going to have. And I, I use a, a couple of different hosts and I've used many over the years. Right now, the two that I'm using, one is Living Dot 
and the other is Rackspace. And they both serve different purposes for me. Living Dot is a good service for blogs. It's cheap. It's what's known as shared hosting, where you're on a, a server with a, many, many other sites. Whereas Rackspace, you're on a dedicated server. And um, in my case, I have a managed server because I don't know how to really play around with the back end myself to, to run the server. So I, I pay for them. And, and part of what you're paying for with Rackspace is this excellent customer service and technical support. But with Living Dot, a cool thing there is that as you're setting up your hosting, you can have them install the blog software for you, whether it be WordPress or movable type. And for the purpose of my example here, I'm going to say that I'm creating a, a new site based on WordPress. That's that's my my sort of um, content management system of choice. It's a free platform and it's very easy to use. So next up, uh, this is something that's optional, but I, I would recommend it is to get some sort of email service. And this is going to be a tool where you can put a, a box on your homepage and every page of your site, if you want, where people can submit their email so they can hear from you whenever you send something out. And whether it be a maybe a, a weekly newsletter or some kind of daily update to your blog or what have you. I use Aweber at aweber.com. And there are a few different tools in there that I use that I'm very happy with. They, they're very big performers for me. One is RSS to email. And basically that's something where with a blog, people can subscribe with an RSS reader to check out your blog and see when you have new posts. But I, um, I gave a test to using their RSS to email tool where people can get an email instead of having to read through an RSS reader. And I found that out of all the subscribers to my blogs, that it, typically about two thirds are reading it through email versus getting it from an RSS reader. So definitely don't cut off these people that just don't want to bother with an RSS reader. And certainly also have a portion of people that just go physically to your blog and read it. But, um, but if people are willing to opt in to be notified, definitely take advantage of that. Also, Aweber enables you to send out newsletters. So you can have people opt into your list there and then just send out some kind of periodic update of what you're up to with the site and any kind of news about it. And there's a you can also use the RSS feature here where you can use from your blog the, the RSS feed and tie it in so that maybe if you wanted something about every week, every month or something, you can have it feature the blog post that you've made. And I use that so that it's entirely automated. My newsletter goes out once a week and it has all of the blog posts from the previous seven days. Also, Aweber enables you to set up a follow-up series. And so that's something where if you have like a like five tips or seven tips or whatever on a certain subject, you can have these successive emails go out like once a day for five days, seven days or whatever. So that's a, a cool thing to keep people engaged. Next up, it's uh, this is probably one of the most important aspects of your site. It's patience. Um, you're going to want to make money right away. Like I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So don't expect to, to monetize this thing right away. It's This is something that's got to be a passion play. you got to think about it for the long term. So what I want you to do and what I would do is to start building content, put up 10, 15, 20 blog posts if you're doing a blog, um, and just focus on getting some people to come there and check out your, your site. Don't just obsess about making money off of it. But then um, when you do get into adding some affiliate programs into the mix, just focus on things that are relevant to whatever your topic is. I know a lot of people get seduced by these offers from various affiliate programs because they have some kind of great payout, but it doesn't really make sense if you're doing a some kind of blog about maybe some kind of rare beaver from Oregon and you're putting debt consolidation banners in your site. That's just, you're never going to make a cent on that, even if they paid some astronomical commission. So go out there and, and just merchandise your site correctly. Work with companies that are relevant to your topic. Go and search around and and um, do different things, and, and I'll, we'll get to finding out the affiliate programs that make sense in a minute. But um, but just uh, focus on relevance, and also um, don't just be fixated on having banners in your site. They, by and large, they don't perform. So uh, one thing that I do is I typically I'll put some banners up there, and, but um, I don't count them. They maybe bring in maybe ten percent of the affiliate income that I see. The rest of it comes from contextual links, where if I'm writing about a certain topic. I'll, I'll just uh, link a few of the words here and there and send them to whatever the relevant thing is. If I'm talking about a, a certain computer model or a, a camera or what have you, I'll link to the place where people can buy that. 
And um, but most uh, paramount is just to test, test very often, and um, try a lot of different things. If you're going to run banners, run them through an ad server. I use OpenX, OpenX.org, so you can do A B or A B C D testing, and you can see what performs the best and drop the things that aren't working for you. And lastly, I uh, just um, you have to go into this understanding. You're not going to make money. You might make some money trickle in early on, but you're not going to really make anything substantial for months. So, um, so just be patient and build it up, and eventually it'll happen. Um, next step: find your voice. A lot of people have this compulsion to try to sound like they're from the New York Times or whatever. But just go in there and be yourself. Just write in your own voice, first person, what you're talking about, and just share your personality. And, um, and also a, a key thing that I found is to have an editorial calendar and that might sort of sound like you're some kind of professional magazine or something, but it's, it's something where it, oops, dropped my pen, uh, something where it helps you to, to have a regular schedule for posting things so that if you just, whenever you have some idle time, just brainstorm some different ideas and plan to cover one thing this coming Thursday, another topic the following Tuesday, just, uh, always have um, some kind of ideas in the hopper there and also a sort of a cheap and easy way to do it is to if it's relevant is to always um, like touch on whatever the, the close holidays are and, and different big events going on news events different things that are topical so so it helps for whatever your topic is to to get inspiration if you just subscribe to Google alerts and uh, just put the keywords in that you're you're covering so if there's a, a big news story or whatever about whatever your genre is, then that can help for inspiration. You can cite whatever that source is. Also, one thing that I do to farm out some ideas is I use a service called Freedback.com. And what I do there is I have a site, AskSeanCollins.com, where people can ask me affiliate marketing questions anonymously, and then I'll answer them on my blog. So if whatever your specialty is, you just be the expert there. Say, ask whatever your name is, .com, and people can submit through Freedback. And it's a free service. They have paid versions as well, but uh, basically it enables you to set up a form really easy on your site, as well as having confirmation emails and thank you pages and things. And whenever somebody submits a question, it triggers an email. So it, it pushes it right into your inbox there. It makes it very easy. And what I do is as I get these emails, I create tasks in the future so that so it sort of plays into the whole editorial calendar thing. Also, one way to sort of backfill and uh, get some some action going, some content on your site. Easy in articles enables you to to reprint the articles from other people. So if you just go there and they just have tons of articles on all, all different subjects, go in there and you can find some relevant articles and post them to your blog and just, you have to follow their rules for proper attribution and everything, but that's a great source for content. And then here we go, um, where to find affiliate programs. And I, um, through Affiliate Summit, we just had a, a survey called AFSTAT recently where we surveyed hundreds of affiliates and asked them where they go and find affiliate programs. Me personally, I usually go to Google and say if I'm looking for, say if I'm creating a website about the New York Yankees, I would look up Yankees affiliate program in Google and just go by those results and see what comes up. And oftentimes I'll find very relevant affiliate programs. But here, as you can see, only 17% of people of the average affiliate out there is using Google. And, um, and 18% are using affiliate directories. I wouldn't really recommend that. I, I did that in the past myself, running an affiliate directory. But um, oftentimes they, they're they very incomplete with the, their coverage of the industry, whereas Google has um, a much broader coverage of the affiliate programs out there. Also, a lot of affiliate directories have an agenda where they're trying to push certain affiliate programs because they get a kickback on them. Also, a lot of affiliate, affiliates out there are joining programs because the affiliate manager contacts them and um, or else they, they're reading the blogs, going to the networks where the affiliate programs reside, going to conferences and meeting with the, the folks that are running the affiliate programs. So a lot of different ways that people are finding affiliate programs. So you can just go through and, and try all these different methods and see what works best for you. But um, so that's it, I told you it'd be quick and easy there. Uh, if you wanna contact me, the door is always open. You can reach me by email at sean at affiliate summit.com. Also I've got there my, my Twitter at affiliate tip aim at affiliate tip um, my main blog is blog.affiliatetip.com and be happy to, to be your friend over there on on facebook you can just um a little shortcut to my my profile there is sean on facebook.com same thing with linkedin sean on linkedin.com so there you go and uh lastly just wanted to give you some 
some details about the next affiliate summit coming up affiliate summit east 2009 and it's only next if you're hearing this before august 2009 i guess but but so we're going to have thousands of affiliate marketers together and um and we're the the premier affiliate marketing conference out there and also the largest we've um up until now we've had i guess somewhere around the neighborhood of 17,000 attendees come through all of our various conferences in the past five plus years um, this one's taking place August 9th to the 11th at the Hilton, New York, in New York City. And it's an opportunity for you to come in there and meet a lot of people, make deals, as well as network with um, fellow affiliates. Or, and um, and also we have educational sessions. So you can come there and learn the latest tips and resources and strategies. So uh, more details there at AffiliateSummit.com. So there you go. Okay, so I told you that was me pretty quick. So. There you go. I hope you find that helpful, and uh, I look forward to hearing your results if you want to share them with me. And good luck with affiliate marketing. Take care.